Welcome to this lecture on Solution to Exercise 5.3 from the book Bartel and Sherbert. Welcome everyone to this lecture series. Today we are going to solve exercise for section 5.3 from the book Introduction to Rail Analysis by Bartel and Sherbert. So let us start with the exercise. So we are going to solve the first question. So let us take the first question. So this is our first question. In this question, we are given a closed and bounded interval AB and we are given that F is continuous on the interval I and the function satisfies the function is strictly positive on the interval I. We have to show that there exists a number alpha such that Fx is greater than or equal to alpha for all x belonging to I. So this question is very simple. You just need to take alpha equal to infimum of Fi. Now because by uh, this function is continuous on the closed interval AB, so it will be uh, bounded on the closed interval AB and it will attain its bound. By maximum minimum theorem, it will attain its bound. So there will exist some point C such that Fc is equal to uh, infimum of Fi, which is equal to your point alpha. And then because F is given to be positive on I, so Fc will be greater than 0. So your infimum will be greater than 0. So let us start with the proof. So let alpha equal to infimum of Fi. Then since F is continuous on closed and bounded interval AB. So by maximum minimum theorem. There exists C belonging to I such that F of C is equal to infimum of Fi which is equal to alpha. Now since by hypothesis it is given that Fc is, Fx is greater than 0 for each x in I. So by hypothesis Fc is greater than 0 that is alpha is greater than 0. Also by definition of infimum. fx is greater than or equal to alpha for all x belonging to i because fx is greater than or equal to the infimum value. So this is there. So this completes the question number one because we were needed to find a point or find a number alpha such that fx is greater than or equal to alpha for all x in i and we are able to find one. Now let us take the question number two. Okay, so in question number two, we are given two continuous function on clo closed and bounded interval AB. We have to show that the set E, which is equal to Fx equal to Gx, has the property that if Xn is any sequence in E and Xn converges to X0, then X0 belongs to E. So basically, we have to show that this X, Xn belongs to X0 belongs to E. So proof. So let Xn be any. So we will use sequential criteria for continuity here. So let Xn be any sequence in E such that Xn converges to X0. Now by, by sequential criteria because F and G are continuous on I. So by sequential criteria for continuity. Okay, first we have to show that this X0 belongs to I. Uh, then only we can use this continuity because we have to show that the function is continuous. Now since i is closed and xn is a sequence in i, so this implies x0 is a limit point of i and every, every uh, closed set contains all its limit points. So this implies x0 belongs to i. So this implies F and G are continuous at X0. So we have shown that the F and G are continuous at X0 because we are given that F and G are continuous on I. And X0 belongs to I. So F and G are continuous at X0. So by sequential criteria for continuity. By sequential criteria for continuity. F of xn converges to f of x0 and g of xn converges to g of x0. 
also for each n belonging to n your xn belongs to this set e so this implies fxn fxn is equal to gxn for all n fxn is equal to gxn for all n belonging to n and this implies limit n tends to infinity fxn is equal to limit n tends to infinity gxn and this implies fx0 because fx0 is the limit of fxn and gx0 is the limit of gxn and this implies your x0 belongs to e hence the proof okay so this completes question number two so we have so we have done three things in this question so first we have shown that this x0 belongs to uh, i it belongs to i because xn is a sequence in i and it converges to x0 and i is closed so it contains all its limit points so it can it will contain x0 and since f and g are continuous at x0 so uh, by sequential criteria for continuity fxn will converge to fx0 gxn will converge to gx0 and then using this property that xn belongs to e so fxn is equal to gxn for every n so limit will be equal and hence fx0 is equal to gx0 and this implies your x0 belongs to this set e okay so let us take the question number three so what is there in question number three okay so another simple question so there are two proofs for this we can do this question in two ways so i will uh, attempt the its solution in both the ways so let us try with the first way so what we are asked is we are given a closed and bounded interval a b and we are given a continuous function f on i So here we are given a continuous function defined on the closed and bounded interval a b and we are given the property that f satisfies the property that for each x in i for every x in i there is there exists a point y in i such that f of y is less than equal to half of f of x we have to show that there exists a point c in i such that f of c is equal to zero so this is uh, so there are two ways to prove it so first we will prove with the easier way we will take the mod function for here modulus function we will take so let us take so given f is continuous on i and second f of y is less than equal for each x for each x belonging to i there exists y belonging to i says that mod fx mod fy is less than half of mod fx so this can be proved simply using considering the mod function now since f is continuous on i so this implies mod f is also continuous on i mod f is the function that mod fx is equal to mod of fx continuous on i now let m equal to infimum of mod fi so infimum of this function mod f then since mod f is continuous on i so by maximum minimum theorem so by maximum minimum theorem we will have a point that exists c belonging to i such that mod of fc is equal to m which is equal to infimum of mod fi okay so we have got a point by maximum theorem it uh, because every continuous function defined in the closed and bounded interval attain its bound so it will attain this infimum so there exists some point c such that mod fc is equal to m so this implies mod fc is equal to m now we have to show that we just have to show that this m is greater than 0 so oh, this m is equal to 0 we just need to prove it so sub claim m is equal to 0 suppose not now if now by hypothesis there exists y belonging to i such that mod fy 
is less than equal to half times f of c which is equal to half of m so if m is greater than 0 then this will imply that mod f y f y is strictly less than uh, m so then mod f y is strictly less than m and that is mod f y mod of f y is strictly less than m which is equal to infimum of mod f i right so it it is a contradiction contradiction to the fact that m is infimum of a contradiction simply write the contradiction because we have already written m is equal to so it, it is a contradiction hence m has to be equal to 0 because if this will be equal to 0 then this condition is satisfied this will be also 0 so equality is there but if m is not equal to 0 then fy will be strictly less than m which is a contradiction because m is the infimum of mod fi mod fi so hence m is equal to 0 that is there exists c belonging to i such that mod of fc is equal to 0 so this implies fc is equal to 0 hence proved So this is how uh, you can prove it using the mod function. Now there is another way to prove this, which is using, which is by generating a sequence. Alternative method. So, so we will generate a sequence one by one. So now because we are given this property, we are given this property that mod fx uh, for each x in i there exists y in i such that mod fy is less than or equal to 1 by 2 fx so what we will do is we will take x1 then there exists some x2 such that mod fx2 is less than or equal to half of mod fx1 then for x2 we will have some x3 such that uh, its uh, absolute value is uh, less than or equal to half of the absolute value of fx2 and uh, so uh, and continuing like this inductively we will generate a sequence xn and then we will use the property so now pick any x1 belonging to i so we have fixed any x1 now by hypothesis there exists x2 belonging to i such that mod fx2 is less than or equal to half of fx1 right and again by hypothesis so now applying hypothesis on x2 there exists x x3 belonging to i such that mod fx3 is less than or equal to half of mod fx2 and mod fx2 because this is less than or equal to half of this so this is less than or equal to ha half of fx1 and continuing like this so continuing inductively like inductively we get a sequence xn so we will be able to generate a sequence because of x3 corresponding we will find some x4 so that fx3 is less than or equal to half of uh, fx uh, fx4 is less than or equal to half of fx3 which will be less than or equal to 1 by 2 cube fx1 so continuing inductively we get a sequence xn in i such that mod fxn is less than or equal to 1 by 2 times fxn minus 1 and which is less than or equal to 1 by 2n minus 1 times fx1 for all n belonging to n yes we will be able to generate a sequence like this which satisfies this property now the limit now limit n tends to infinity mod fxn is less than or equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 by 2n minus 1 terms fx1 and this term is constant and this term is going to 0 as n tends to infinity so this is equal to 0 and now this is mod so it, uh, its limit has to be positive so this implies limit n tends to infinity mod fxn is equal to 0 that is limit n tends to infinity fxn is equal to 0 mark it as star that is our fxn is approaching to 0 now come back to the sequence xn because xn is a sequence in i and i is closed and bounded so xn is a bounded sequence since xn is a sequence 
in i and i is bounded so this implies xn is a bounded sequence and by bolzano westras theorem every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence so by bolzano westras theorem xn there exists a subsequence x there exists a convergent subsequence a subconvergent there exists a convergent subsequence x and k of x n converging to c c so we are assuming that the subsequence convergent subsequence is converging to c that is x and k is converging to c that is x and k is converging to c now by sequential so since c belongs to i because i x and k is a sequence in i so clearly since x and k is a sequence in i and i is closed so this implies c belongs to i because uh, every closed set contains all its limit point and c is the limit point of this set so it it will belong to this set i now since f is continuous on i so this implies f is continuous at c so by sequential criteria for continuity f of x and k converges to f of c okay so mark it as double star now from star because we have already proved that limit x tends to infinity uh, n tends to infinity f x n is equal to 0 so this implies limit n tends to x k tends to infinity f x n k is also because if a sequence converges to some point then every subsequence of that sequence converges to the same point so from star we know that f x n k converges to 0 so by uniqueness of limit fc is equal to 0 so we are able to find a point c in i such that fc is equal to 0 hence the proof so there are two ways to prove it so one is this that we can generate a sequence xn like this and then we can use the bolzano test theorem to get the desired point and other ways that we can take and you make use of the modulus function and then the maximum minimum value uh, maximum minimum theorem and then we can get the our desired point so this is how you can do it so there are two ways to do question number three now let us move to question number four so in question number four we have to show that every polynomial of odd degree with real coefficients has at least one root so we have to use location of roots theorem here so for that we will have to define our function so proof so any polynomial is of the form so let px equal to a n x n plus a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus so on a 1 x plus a naught be a polynomial of degree n where n is odd and a n is not equal to 0 right so we have considered any polynomial of odd degree so we have considered any polynomial of odd degree and a is belong to r so basically we have considered any polynomial of odd degree with real coefficients now we have to show that it has at least one real root claim there exists c belonging to r such that p of c is equal to 0 so we have to show that it has at least one real root so we have to show existence of one real number for at which the value of the polynomial is 0 now what we will do is we will uh, assume, assume that an is greater than 0 because otherwise we can work with 
minus p also and if p has some if p is a zero at some point then minus p will also be zero at that point so we can work with minus p so without loss of generality without loss of generality assume that an is greater than zero if needed we can work with minus p so it's that because we can work with minus p so that's why we can assume that an is greater than zero now if an is get now an is greater than zero so consider px so px is your an xn plus so on plus a1 x plus a naught so if you will take x to the power n outside so this will be an plus an minus 1 by x plus so on a1 by x to the power n minus 1 plus a naught by x to the power n so from here what you can conclude is that limit n tends to or x tends to infinity px because if you will take the limit as x tends to infinity so this term will go to 0 this term will go to 0 this term will go to 0 so you will be left with x to the power n a n and because a n is positive so this will go to infinity so it will go to plus infinity and limit x tends to minus infinity px will go to minus infinity and limit x tends to infinity px equal to plus infinity implies there is some point at which the function is positive and limit x tends to infinity minus infinity px equal to minus infinity implies there is some point at which so for k equal to 1 there exists m1 by using the definition of infinite limits at infinity we are using this there exists m1 m2 belonging to z positive such that px is greater than 1 for all x greater than or equal to m1 and px is less than minus 1 for all x less than or equal to minus m2 okay so basically we are so we are able to show that at some points px is positive and at some points px is negative so px is changing its sign on the interval r so let a equal to m1 and b equal to minus m2 then clearly f of a is equal to f of a is positive because f of a is greater than 1 f of a is greater than 1 which is greater than 0 and f of b is less than minus 1 which is less than 0 so let because we don't know now which one is greater a is greater than a is greater or b is greater so we don't know that so what we will take is let i be the closed interval with end points a and b we don't know which one is uh, bigger or which one is smaller so we can say that with the end points a and b simply so i can be either i so i can be either equal to a b if a is smaller than b or i could be equal to b a if b is smaller than a so because we don't know this so we will simply say that let i be the closed interval with end points a and b down f is oh sorry the polynomial every polynomial function is continuous since polynomial functions are continuous everywhere on R so this implies P is continuous on R and this implies P is continuous on I because your I is contained in R so now f of a so basically now p is changing its sign from positive to negative now p is continuous on i f of a is greater than zero and f of b is less than zero so by location of root theorem there exists c lying between a and b such that f of c is oh sorry p of c is equal to 0 so p p 
so p of c is equal to 0 so we needed to show existence of some point at which the polynomial is, is 0 so that implies c is a real root of p hence the proof so we have shown that there exists at least one real root of p so we are able to complete this question that every polynomial of our degree with real coefficients has at least one real root so we have what we have done is we have taken any or polynomial of our degree and then we have assumed that it's uh, the coefficient with the maximum degree term is uh, positive because we can assume this because otherwise we can work with minus p also and then we have shown that limit x tends to infinity px is equal to plus infinity limit x tends to minus infinity px equal to minus infinity then by definition of infinite limits at infinity we are able to find for k equal to 1 we are able to find two integers m1 m2 such that this condition is satisfied then we have taken a equal to m1 b equal to minus m2 then f of a is greater than 1 b f of b is minus less than 1 so we have considered any closed interval we have considered i to be the closed interval with endpoints a b so because we have because we don't know which one is bigger or which one is smaller so that's why we have written endpoints simply endpoints so then by location of roots theorem we are able to find some point c at which the value of the polynomial is 0 so that is c is a real root of the polynomial p now let us come to the question number 5 so in question number 5 again we are given a polynomial So in this question, we are asked that, uh, to prove that uh, let Px be a polynomial given by x to the power 4 plus 7x cube minus 9. That has at least two real roots. We have to show that it has at least two real roots. And we have to use a calculator to locate these roots to within two decimal places. So this I will not be doing here uh, using the calculator part. This is very easy. You can make a table. I will just let you know where the table that you have to make and you can easily do this and two decimal places means you have to reduce the error to 10 to the power minus 2. So basically you have to reduce the error to 10 to the power minus 2 and error is nothing but it is uh, so it is a half of b n minus a n so this is the error at any point at any uh, and it's at any step the error is 1 by 2 times b n minus a n in the bisection method so let us try to prove this so given so p x is equal to x to the power 4 plus 7 x cube minus 9 to show there exists c1 c2 belonging to r such that f of c1 is equal to 0 equal to sorry p of c1 equal to 0 equal to p of c2 so we have to show existence of two points in r at which the, the value of the polynomial is 0 so this so we basically we have to show two intervals in which the polynomial is changing its sign so one of the point you can easily see that this this is negative when if you take x equal to 0 so then this two terms will be 0 so this will be negative so clearly p of 0 is minus 9 now when this will become positive when you will increase this if you take increase this so if you take uh, x equal to 2 then p2 will be 2 to the power 4 which is 16 so p2 is 2 to the power 4 plus 7 into 2 cube minus 9 which is definitely greater than 0 this is less than 0 so one interval is that 0 to 2 so one of the root will lie between 0 to 2 and now another we have to find so now we have to find something for, so if you keep on increasing x then this will keep on uh, increasing so you can so other point will come in negative now which negative term will decide that it will be positive so if you see this will make the term positive any number in this will make the term positive so now if you want to so now this should because this will make it positive so you have to put something negative in this as that this the impact of this becomes greater than the impact of this so now because this is already x cube so to make the, uh, the impact of this greater than this you have to take something in negative whose absolute value is greater than 
7 because then only this will have a greater impact than this so we will take uh, p of minus 8 for p of minus 8 or minus 9 you can take so let us take p of or minus 9 will also impact this so you can take p of minus 9 so this will be minus 9 to the power 4 plus 7 into minus 9 to the power cube minus 9 so you can take minus 9 cube outside so this will be minus 9 plus 7 minus 9 so this is something very bigger than minus 9 because this this whole term is positive because this is minus 2 into so this you can write as 2 into 9 cube minus 9 which is definitely greater than 0 so we have found two intervals so so this is our 0 this is our 2 and this is our minus 9 here it is positive here it is negative here it is positive so there will exist some c1 in this interval and some c2 by location of roots theorem there will exist some c1 in this such that p of c1 is equal to 0 and p of c2 is equal to 0 by location of roots theorem now since now since every polynomial function is continuous on r so p is continuous on r also p of minus 9 is positive also we have p of 0 is less than 0 less than p of minus 9 okay we can write like this p of minus 9 is greater than 0 which is greater than p of 0 and p of 0 is less than 0 less than p of a, uh, 2 so by location of roots theorem there exists c1 belonging to minus 9 to 0 and c2 belonging to 0 to 2 such that p of c1 is equal to 0 and p of c2 is equal to 0 so this is how you can work uh, you can prove that there exist two real, real roots so that this implies p has at least two real roots now for the second part of this question that uh, use a calculator to locate these roots to within two decimal places so you can make these tables for both so for a n equal to a 1 equal for a equal to minus 9 b equal to 0 you can make this table so you have to take uh, n where n is the n step then you your a n then b n then midpoint of these p n you have to make this table then you have to find f of uh, p of p n P of p n and then uh, your error and error is nothing but half of b n minus a n so this you have to reduce to 2 10 to the power up to 2 decimal places this should be up to 2 decimal places so that means 10 to the power minus 2 so for n equal to 1 you you will take a1 equal a, a1 is your minus 9 this is 0 so this will be your uh, minus 4.5 so you will find this value if it is positive and negative because this this is your positive this has to be negative f of p n here should be positive f of p n here should be negative so if this comes out to be positive then you will change your uh, if this comes out to be positive then you will change your a n if this comes out to be negative then you will change your b n so this is how you will proceed and then you will get your answer so this is how you have to find these values and you have to find these values and keep on doing this similarly the same work you will do for a equal to 0 and b equal to 2 the same work and then you will get the desired results using calculator so this can be done through calculators so you have to so basically you have to find this value so this is by bisection method so this is the bisection method then for n equal to 2 an will be equal to p an will be equal to pn if uh, pn fp of pn is positive 
or an bn will be equal to pn if p of pn is negative so this is how you have to do it so we are not going to do it in the class now let us go to the third or sixth question So in the sixth question, we are given a continuous function on the interval 0, 1 to r such that we are given that f of 0 is equal to f of 1. We have to prove that there exists a point c in 0 to 1 by 2 such that f of c equal to f of c plus 1 by 2. So whenever there, are, uh, there is some uh, uh, there is some function, there is some fun continuous function that repeats its uh, value then So it, if there is some function which uh, for which p of a equal to p of b for some then it will attain its uh, there will be some zero at a to a uh, this b by 2 in this some there will be some zero in this interval whenever such such a thing happen for any continuous function which is which repeats its value because if it will repeat its value then it will come back because it will have to come back to the same value so it will have to somehow cross zero at some point in this interval so this this is the main idea so you, the same proof can be applied which we are going to use it here so now given f is continuous on 0 1 and to take And we are given that f of 0 is equal to f of 1. So this these two things are given to show there exists c belonging to i such that f of c is equal to f of c plus 1 by 2. So this is what we have to prove. So how to prove this? So what we will do is So we will define a function, define g from 0, 1 by 2 to r as g of x equal to f of x minus f of x plus 1 by 2 for every x in 0 to 1 by 2. Because we have to find some point at which this these two are equal, so that means we have to find some point at which g is equal to 0. So we have to find some point in this interval at which g is equal to 0. So, the, so we have to uh, use the location of root zero and for that we have to prove that g is ch changing its sign in this interval now so by algebra of continuous by algebra of continuity f is continuous on 0 1 implies g is continuous on 0 to 1 by 2 okay so we have uh, we have that g is a continuous function on 0 to 1 by 2 also g of 0 is equal to f of 0 minus f of 1 by 2 and g of 1 by 2 is equal to f of 1 by 2 minus f of 1 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 so the which is f of 1 by 2 minus f of 1 which is equal to f of 1 by 2 minus f of oh, f of 0 because we are given that f of 0 is equal to f of 1 and this is nothing but minus of g of 0 so g of 1 by 2 is equal to minus of g of 0 so we have two possibilities either these two both are 0 so in that case now if f of 0 is equal to f of 1 by 2 then c equal to 0 is the desired point that is g oh, f of c is equal to f of c plus 1 by 2 desired point such that f of c is equal to f of c plus 1 by 2 because 0 0 plus 1 by 2 if f of 0 is not equal to f of 1 by 2 then g of 0 and g of 1 by 2 have opposite signs and since g is 
continuous on 0 to 1 by 2. So by location of roots theorem, there exists some C belonging to 0 to 1 by 2 such that G of C is equal to 0. So that is f of c is equal to f of c plus 1 by 2 hence proof so we have shown the existence of some point c in the interval 0 to 1 by 2 such that f of c is equal to f of c plus 1 by 2 now in the next part we are asked that conclude that there are at any time antipodal points antipodal points meet opposite points opposite points so that means if you if you join the two points on the earth then they will pass through the center of the earth so on the earth's equator that have the same temperature so we have to find two points so basically if we consider this to be an equator of the earth so if we consider this to be an equator of the earth then we have to find some point a so there will be some point so suppose this is okay so suppose this is our sun so this is our so this is our sun and this is our equator of oh, earth's equator okay now so what this question is asking is show the existence of some point a so you have to show the existence of some point a such that if so let us take this to be the center of the earth so it says that a uh, point a line uh, so these are two antipodal points because the line joining the two points is passing through the center so this point b so we have to show the existence of these two points these two antipodal points says that temperature at a is equal to temperature at b so we have to show the existence of these two points so for that now because temperature because the sun has uh, uh, the rays varies uh, continuously so we can assume that we can assume that the temperature so at any point so so temperature varies continuously along the equator of the earth so we can assume this because the sun rays will uh, vary continuously it, it, it so now this will re, this will be warmer side because this will be warmer side because this is kind of, uh, 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 having the direct sunlight and this side will be colder at any point so this is the condition of because this will rotate around the sun so this situation will keep on changing but and because it also revolves around its axis so at some point this will come to face the sun directly but right now at any point suppose this is facing the sun directly now what we will do is we will take any initial line we can choose any initial line or let me draw it with some other color so let us take this to be initial line so now at any point any point on this equator can be represented by so if p is any point on this equator so if p is any point on this equator then we can represent this uh, by the uh, by an angle which this line op so this is our center so this line op makes with the so this if this is theta then we can represent so we are taking the in anti clockwise direction with this initial line so this is our initial line now at any point we can rep represent the temperature by its function and since each point p is uniquely represented by this theta so we can represent their temperature at any point by t theta so t theta represents temperature at any point p and p is represented by theta so at any point p theta okay so now we have a function we have a function t now because this angle varies from 0 to 2 pi so we have a function 0 to 2 pi to our temperature function is a function from t 0 to 2 pi to r such that and it takes theta to t theta okay and 
if you look at this what there is one more property because this point this point x this point is same for 0 as well as theta equal to 2 pi so we have t0 is equal to t of 2 pi so we have these two facts for a temperature function now we can prove this fact this fact now we can come to our so we have to use this function because we have to conclude using this this so we have to define a function f from 0 1 to r such that it satisfies these two properties so what we will do is we will take a function first so define h from 0 1 to 0 to 2 pi as h of x equal to 2 pi x for all x belonging to 0 to 1 so this is a function from 0 to 1 to i and this is a continuous function so h is continuous on zero to one clearly the way it is defined now we have to define a function so we have to find define a function f which satisfies this prop these properties so what can be our function f so we can take f to be the function so define f from 0 1 to r so now because we if let us first see this so we have these two functions okay so we have this set is our interval 0 1 this set is our interval 0 to 2 pi and this set is our interval uh, this set is set of real so this from here to here we have the function h we have defined and from here to here we have the temperature function t continuous this is continuous and this is also continuous so this function which is this function we can take f equal to h t of h then this is also continuous composition of two continuous function is continuous so this will also be continuous so define f from 0 1 to r as f of f equal to t of h then f is continuous on r by com since composition of two continuous function is since composition of two continuous function is continuous now so also f of 0 is t of h of 0 which is equal to t of 0 and f of 1 is equal to t of h of 1 which is equal to t of 2 pi and which is equal to t of 0 because we have already assumed that t of 0 will because these two are the same points so t of 0 is equal to t of 1 from star so mark it as star so from star so hence we are able to obtain a function which is continuous on 0 1 and which satisfies this f of 0 so this implies f of 0 is equal to f of 1 so by the part a of the question there exists some c belonging to 0 1 such that f of c is equal to f of uh, 1 uh, f of c plus 1 by 2 so this implies t of h of c is equal to t of h of c plus 1 by 2 so this implies t of 2 pi c is equal to t of 2 pi c plus pi okay so this is this is nothing but that is t of theta is equal to t of theta plus pi 
where theta is equal to 2 pi c for some c belonging to 0 to 1. So basically we are able to find, so we are able to obtain some theta uh, 2 pi c. So suppose if, if I make it like this, so this if I take this as a 2 pi c, so if you look at this, if I take this equal to 2 pi c, if I take this equal to 2 pi c, then this is, uh, this angle is uh, pi plus 2 pi c. So these two points are antipodal points, right? So we are able to find, so we are able to show that temperature at A is equal to temperature at B. So since theta and theta plus pi represents antipodal points, so hence we are able to show that at antipodal points, there exist two antipodal points, there exist antipodal points such that uh, temperature at that points are exactly the same. So basically what we have to do, you have to just define, the, you have to take this function, temperature function. So it is, con it is assumed to be continuous because we assume that the temperature varies along the equator of the earth continuously and now this, this satisfies t of 0 equal to t of 2 pi. So then we are we will be able to show that uh, so here because we have we wanted to use this kind of function here we wanted to use this function f we wanted to use conclude from this so that's why we have defined like this h otherwise we could have directly gone and uh, gone on to prove this uh, that there exist two points using the same argument that we did for so we could have defined another function h says that t theta minus t theta plus pi we could have defined that function and then we were we would have been able to prove that there exists some point at which h of theta is equal to 0 that is t of theta equal to t of theta plus pi. So we could have directly done that but because we wanted to use this right now this function f so that's why we proceeded like this. I have also solved this uh, uh, this example uh, directly in one of my video you can look at that video for but because we wanted to use function f so I have done this question like this. So now let us go to the Next question, which is question number seven. So show that the equation x equal to cos x has a solution in the interval zero to pi by two. So basically what we will do is we will take the function fx equal to x minus cos x and then we will show that it changes the sign from 0 to pi by 2 and then you will by location of root theorem you will be able to prove this so proof simple let us do it so define so define f from 0 to pi by 2 to r as fx equal to x minus cos x for all x belonging to 0 to pi by 2 then clearly f is continuous on 0 to 2 pi by 2 because the function fx equal to x is continuous and x goes to cos x is also continuous because trigonometric functions are continuous everywhere on their domain and so this is continuous the by algebra of continuity so we can say that f is continuous on 0 to pi by 2 now f of 0 is 0 minus cos 0 and we know that cos 0 is 1 so this is minus 1 this is less than 0 and f of pi by 2 is pi by 2 minus cos pi by 2 and cos pi by 2 is 0 so this is pi by 2 minus 0 which is greater than 0 so f is so because f is continuous on this interval and it is changing its sign from positive to negative so by location of roots theorem there exists c belonging to 0 to pi by 2 
such that f of c is equal to 0. So the function f has a real root in this interval 0 to pi by 2 has a solution in this interval 0 to pi by 2. Hence root. So this completes question number 7. So there is one so there is one more question of the similar type you have to show that it the function so let us do that the question number eight so it is of the similar type same thing we have to do we have to take the function so fx is given to be the function 2 of uh, natural log x plus root x minus 2 and we have to show that this function has root in the interval 1 to 2 so basically we have to show that it changes its sign from positive to negative or negative to positive in the interval 1 to 2 so again proof we consider fx equal to 2 and uh, ln x natural log plus root x minus 2 for all x belonging to 1 to 2 now your f this because a natural log logarithmic function is continuous everywhere so this function is continuous everywhere then your root function is also continuous for all x greater than or equal to 0 so this function is a continuous function clearly f is continuous on 1 to f is continuous on 1 to 2 now what next we have to find the values at the point x equal to 1 and at the point x equal to 2 so what is f of 1 f of 1 is 2 natural log 1 plus root 1 minus 2 so now this is 0 log 1 is 0 so this is 0 and this log, root 1 is 1 so 1 minus 2 which is uh, negative now what about f of 2 f of 2 is 2 natural log 2 plus root 2 minus 2 so what is the value of natural log 2 so we know that the, the value of natural log 2 is 0 0.693 approximately ln 2 is approximately equal to 0 0.693 right so we are using this so this is this and root 2 is approximately 1.41 and so this is approximate value in fact uh, this value is greater than this so we can take this so approximately this and minus 2 so if you see this this is uh, almost 1.4 1.4 2.8 so this is positive right so f of 2 is positive f of 1 is negative so by location of roots theorem there exist c belonging to 1 to 2 says that f of c equal to 0 hence proved so we are able to prove that uh, this has a so the, okay sorry the question number eight this has a root in the interval one to two so this much is enough in this part in the next part we will solve from question number eight to uh, nine to question number uh, 19 so for now let us end this so thank you everyone have a good day bye Thank you for watching this video. To stay updated, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cosmos Learning. Happy learning through Cosmos Learning. To watch more, click on any of these cards. Thank you once again.